Well, gracious greetings, St. Stephen family and guests. Welcome to another edition of Living Water for Thirsty Thursday. We've been talking about living single in the Savior's service. And today we want to continue that discussion. Uh, we've been blessed hearing, I know, from our panel. And that's what we want to do today is just glean as much as we possibly can from our panel about that contentment, about living this Christian journey uh, as a single for God's glory. So let's just sit back, relax, take in what we can take in, listening to our singles. Uh, this maturity, this contentment that you have. Um, and it'd be good if, if in your own words, you could share with everyone anything tangible that you use within your faith to help you embrace your singleness that's helped you to get to this level of maturity of where you are. Um, I just want to hear from all, all five of you on, on that. Uh, and you can chime in wherever you feel like. But what would you share, Sister Cox? Uh, my belief and, and my faith is what, you know, I just, I just believe that, you know, and, I, and God has already shown me that, you know, there is someone for me. You know, he's working it out. And so, you know, but in the in the early stages, you know, you just have to believe that, you know, this is, you know, what is for you. And coming out of a relationship, I think I was at a point where I needed to take some time to be by myself to figure out, you know, first of all, to heal, to figure out, you know, where I was going. You know, I was young when I got married. Did You know, you don't even know who you are, let alone know who somebody else is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think I had to kind of like step back and regroup on top of the fact that I had, you know, two children that I needed to, you know, to uh, take care of. So I just kind of put all of my energy into um, my kids and God, you know, just believing that he's going to take me, you know, where I needed to be and then re restore me enough to be able to be, you know, someone's wife, you know, so because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it, people take for granted what it means, you know, to be a wife. You know, it's more than just, you know, having a husband or a partnership. There's a lot that goes with, you know, you know, being a wife. And, you, you know, I think that you have to really know yourself, you know, because it, it, sometimes in, in learning yourself, you realize it's not cut out. You're not cut out for it. You know, it really ain't your calling. You know, mm -hmm. so some people, you know, it, and it's not for everyone. You know, it's something that I desire and I, and I know, you know, in my current situation that he is definitely working it out, you know, and I'm. I'm walking down those paths, but I totally, you know, um, held on to my faith. You know, I just, I had to keep believing and understanding that, you know, this was for a purpose. My singleness was for a purpose and that God, you know, was guiding me, you know, every day to where I was supposed to go. You know, now how quickly was I learning the lesson? Sometimes, you know, sometimes than others, but, you know, and I think there were, you know, there's up days, there's down days, there's good days, there's days where you, you know, you're shaking your fist at God, like, look, I, you know, I can't do this no more. You know, but you do have to grow to be content. You have to, or yeah. you will not make it. Mm -hmm. You won't make it. You have to be content. You have to learn to love yourself and just your situation. You know, I do enjoy, you know, being who I am and where I am right now. And it will change, you know, in God's time. Amen. Well said all the way around. And uh, especially from yours, because you are, and I appreciate you sharing that in the transparency. You're sharing, you're checking a couple boxes. So you've had some time to single parent, uh, mm -hmm. fight through fight through a divorce as well, and living single. And so those are not easy hurdles to navigate. And uh, and like you said, the main thing is to have more intimacy, intimacy and closeness with God, and accept His will uh, for right now, because all we have is right now. Like you're saying, oh, right, Sister Barlow, thank you. Thank you. You know, when I, you know, the question that you're asking about maturity in Christ and, you know, the overlook society and how Christ views sing singleness, uh, yeah, society polarizes singleness, mm. and, you know, and then right now through this whole advent of COVID, you know, as a single individual, um, navigating these, you know, tumultuous, volatile times you know, was challenging because I, I was my own bubble, you know, but the beauty of it was I did contract COVID and I did have my beautiful St. Stephen family who, you know, loved on me and bought me 
care packages to my door, you know, to make sure that I was okay. So, you know, in that sense, not having someone, you know, as a covering, you know, mm-hmm. during these particular times and, and navigating these waters, that was a challenge, you know, but as far as God's view of who I am as a single, for him, it allows me to have more time to spend in his word. It allows me more time to grow in his word. And when I think about the whole concept of Christian principles, pastor, one of the things that you said to me when my mom passed away is put your feet to your faith. And that I apply to every aspect of every struggle that I have. I put my feet to my faith. And I said, if God is who he says he is in my life, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to trust this state that I'm in. So like Paul, I've had to, you know, just believe that even though, you know, society labels everything and everybody, I just got to remember who God says I am. Just because Mm -hmm. that's who you say I am doesn't mean that that's who God says I am. And it's important to me to be content, you know? And so getting in my word daily, studying it and, and, and just realizing what God has to say about who I am as a believer. And so my faith is the essence, it's, a, it's the central part of, of me. You know, it, it, ask anybody who knows me. I believe in life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I refuse to speak anything negative over my life because I do believe what God has for me is for me, you know, and if I am to be single, this has been a process, just being content in the state. And so as far as that maturity comes, it's like, I've been practicing it for so long that it's second nature. You know, I, I'm not going to turn around and say, I can't function. I can't do without, because I'm not putting that negativity out in the atmosphere. So whatever it is or whoever he is that God, you know, has in store for me, because I I do believe that, I mean, he didn't take the feeling of being in a relationship away from me. So that feeling isn't gone. Mm -hmm. And because Mm -hmm. that feeling isn't gone, I don't believe that I'm destined to be single forever. But right now I'm content. Mm -hmm. I've learned to be content. Mm. I, I, I don't think that there's anything missing. I don't think there's anything about me that's broken. And I, I'm embracing, I've just learned to embrace the state and I'm just fighting the good fight of faith. I believe what the Bible says about me. And that's what I'm standing on. Amen. Well said. Uh, amen. Amen. So Dennis, what are you using? How do you use your faith to, to uh, walk through this, this journey that you're on? Now, really, really what really gets to me is like the evening dinner time, mm-hmm. usually dinner time, we always had dinner together. Mm. So now I find myself having dinner alone. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I won't even sit at the table. I sit somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But I have learned through the grace of God, I have learned to live with it. Mm. I know my husband is not coming back, Mm -hmm. so I just have to keep on moving. Mm -hmm. I have to have faith, and so far, God has taken care of me. It will be eight years next month. The 23rd of September will be eight years. Praise the Lord. And we was married 47 years when mm-hmm. God called him home. Mm-hmm. So I've learned to, I never will get over it, but I learned to live with it. Mm. Wow, that's excellent right there. I'll never get over it and I've accepted that, but I have learned day to day how to live with it. Right. Yeah, that's that's powerful and very helpful. And, and we've seen it. I mean, I, we see you stay active and how you serve and what you do and you're still smiling and doing what you do. And I know how important food is for you and cooking and, and even to your husband. But uh, Okay, yeah. with me, single slash widow, mm-hmm. I think with my faith, I'm right where God intends for me to be. Mm. I really am content in my situation. Wow. I am really content. 
So I think I'm just where he want me to be. Those words are perfect. I mean, I'm just where God wants me to be. And so we know since God is omnipotent and omniscient that he knows everything. He has all the power. So obviously if he wanted us somewhere else, we would be somewhere else, right? So, but the, but the thing that you're saying that's so heavy, that's spiritually mature, is that I believe it and I accept it. Because that's where we struggle, typically. It isn't that God doesn't have all the power, doesn't know everything. It's just in our own personal situation, sometimes we think, well, maybe he maybe overlooked me on this particular area. And I just kind of got missed in the shuffle somehow. Because it's hard for us to embrace that this is where he wants me, regardless of whatever that is in this particular moment. Amazing it doesn't come up like that, you know, when we just got a million dollars. Like, ooh, thank you, Lord. And then, hey, this is where he wanted me. That's but it. other areas we do struggle. So I, I, I appreciate the, the, the insight of just, this is where God wants me and I'm good with it. And that's, that's the, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's not locked Amen. in on yesterday, and that's not locked in on the future. That's locked in on the present. Was blessed in having that time with them uh, on that Zoom call to glean. I know I learned so much, and I pray that you will as well. Continue to make God proud in all you say, think, and do.